Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon here with Texas Plinking Gear with some more gear to show off. So this is only the second video I've done, but uh, what's going on here is I have two of the baddest scopes of Vortex makes for two guns that I don't even have yet. So instead of just putting them on the shelf and, uh, and just thinking about them, I kind of wanted to mess around with them, kind of get an idea for the clarity and everything like that, but certainly kind of talk about them in this video. So obviously based off the title, you guys know I'm talking about the Razer HD Gen 2 that everyone's Pretty much already very familiar with as being a top tier from Vortex's lineup. Uh, but then one that doesn't really get talked about too much is the one underneath it, which is the Razer HD AMG. Again, part of the Razer lineup being, you know, Razer being the top end from Vortex. So this video isn't so much a versus as if we're trying to pick a winner, but I just kind of want to compare and contrast. And uh, if, just in case you guys are kind of tossed up on them or just kind of in the market for a high-end scope, this one's a whole new one for me. So I haven't opened up uh, these two um, yet. So we're going to go ahead and unbox them, kind of get some first impressions and play around with them without the rifles. But anyway, if you guys want to see that, just stay tuned, hopefully within a month or two on the main channel, Texas Plinking. Otherwise, let's just talk about it real quick. Before we unbox them and kind of compare and contrast them though, um, real quickly, a note about Vortex in general. I think this is a company that has a overall uh, reputation and everything that about, and opinionated in the industry that about 90% or 95% of people would say something positive about it. There is that last, I would say about 5% who would say Vortex is cheap. I've tried one, I don't like them. Here's what you have to understand about Vortex. They're really cool what they do being the kind of everything brand. Schmidt and Bender, Night Force, they're never gonna make anything economic. That's just their role. That's their niche, military, police, high end. That's all they play. I would say it divides out to about four different departments. I would say it's Chinese, Philippines, uh, Japanese, and American. That's kind of the tiers Vortex works. To give you a quick example, the Diamondback Tactical as a Chinese series, $350 scope gets you, you know, a great reticle, first focal plane, zero reset. Overall, it's kind of stripped of certain features, but it's a heavy hitting optic at 350 bucks. Uh, then above that, Philippine, uh, Filipino lineup, you have the uh, Viper PST uh, and the Gen 2s made in the Philippines. Those can go even out to $1,000 and under, uh, but all of a sudden now you have better glass quality, you have illumination, tactility is way improved, and that's a great optic for recreational shooting, amateur uh, shooting competition, all that kind of stuff, certainly. Above that is what you guys very well know with the 1 to 6, the 1 to 10, uh, 3 to 18, 4 and a half to 27. And now the LHT, uh, the hunting tactical kind of crossover, the Razor series, that's the Japanese lineup. Same with the red dots as well. Um, but then there's one above that that's not so much talked about, like I had mentioned, the American lineup. So the AMG Huey, the UH-1, is made in America as the holographic sight. But as the rifle scope, this is in fact made in America uh, with a German reticle. Think about Japanese and German, where we're talking about overall glass quality and everything though. Uh, if you talk about camera, I'm using a Sony right now, Japanese, uh, Leica, and, uh, and uh, who else? Zeiss, German. So these are the top tier stuff. However, the scope itself assembled in the United States. That's for the Razer HD AMG. All four of those tiers are covered by the Vortex lifetime warranty. Some people kind of gripe on that and say, oh, well, the best warranty is the one you don't need. Very much so true. However, uh, when you're dealing with kind of optics of the entry level price point, the fact that they can replace them 20 years after you buy them, transferable, no receipts kept, you gotta respect that. Uh, truth is though, the higher you go up through that little totem pole of quality, the less you're gonna need that warranty, I can tell you that. My experience with a lot of Vortex optics with no bias, I do like a ton of different optics as well, don't get me wrong, I made plenty of videos with them. No bias, me personally, I really do like Vortex. That was a lot of talking, let's just go ahead and get into it. Packaging on the erasers. Any eraser you ever buy is pretty awesome. Nice little foam protection here. You've got a little, what is that? Uh, inspection sticker past inspection by TJ. Thank you, TJ, you're the real MVP here. Uh, Razer HD Gen 2 rifle scope uh, product manual. And this one specifically has the H59 reticle. This is an instruction manual on how to utilize the H59 reticle. We'll kind of talk about the H59 and uh, reticle options later again. Big old Team Vortex sticker, awesome. You get a cleaning cloth. Big old sunshade. Let's see here, we got our uh, adjustment tool. You got a flat head, a couple little, uh, this is made out of plastic so it doesn't mar this, but you could go ahead and use that to open up the caps for re-zeroing or putting the battery in. Little Allen key there to loosen the turrets. And, uh, and again, a, um, a flat head. Got the battery in here with another Allen key. Redundancy, fantastic, one is none. 
Uh, then that should be it minus the scope itself. The packaging on the Gen 2 was fantastic, but all of a sudden now the cardboard on this one is uh, much thicker. You open it up this away, two manuals up there. Ooh, I didn't know that. These come with the caps right out of the box. Pretty nice. Um, some Vortex stickers, always cool. Again, with the torque rating bit there, again, I didn't know it came with the caps just like that. That's kind of convenient, really convenient actually. Cool, put that off to the side here. What's this here? Thank you for choosing Vortex. JJ, you also the real MVP, my guy. Uh, another sticker, battery, put that off to the side. Cleaning cloth again, sunshade. It's a pretty stout sunshade actually. Um, what do we have here? Got another tool. So let's go ahead and just dive into the specs. Now I will warn you, uh, just based off the specs, you guys will probably jump to the conclusion that this is the better scope just off the spec sheet. However, it is the better scope in certain applications, whereas this one is the better scope in other applications. See if you guys can figure it out for yourselves. So let's get started with the AMG. This is a six to 24 by 50, six to 24 zoom range, 50 millimeter bell. Whereas, and that's the only way that one comes with, if you wanted to get a, um, a comparable uh, scope on the Razer series, well, you have two. You get a three to 18 by 50, or you could get the four and a half to 27 by 56. So a larger bell, and just more magnification all the way around actually, uh, or more leniency and more variability. You can go lower, four and a half rather than six, you can go to 27 rather than 24. So your variability, your zoom range is much larger with this one and you get the larger um, bell as well. Both of them are first focal plane, of course. Um, tube size, this has got a 30 millimeter tube, whereas this one has got a 34 millimeter tube. Big benefit with that usually is that you have more uh, adjusting on elevation, uh, for the larger tube, you could pack in just more, so for extreme long range shooting. However, we'll get to that. The difference is actually not as big as you think on these two. Let's talk about reticles. You could get any reticle you want with the AMG, so long as it's the EBR 2B reticle. MOA or Mills, but that is the reticle uh, that it comes with. And really, I have no complaints about that. It is a pretty awesome reticle, just kind of looking through it. I got some external, or some uh, help with lighting here, so I'm kind of aiming it right there. I'll have to take a picture of that for you guys. Very, very clean reticle. Uh, I do like that quite a bit. You guys can get an EBR2 or EBR7C reticle with this, but you could also, it's expanded, obviously uh, Mills or MOA, just like the AMG, but it's expanded also to the H59 Horus reticle and the Horus Tremor 3 reticle. Uh, those are fairly new additions. Um, this one right here happens to have the H59. Both of them are illuminated. That reminds me, I gotta put the batteries in in just a bit here, but yeah, both of them are illuminated. Yeah, let's talk about that travel, actually. I just mentioned the travel with the different tube sizes. Uh, with a 30 millimeter tube, the AMG gets an impressive 27.5 mils of elevation travel. Whereas you would expect quite a bit more with this one being a 34 millimeter tube, but it is more, but it's 28.5. Again, 27.5, 28.5, um, so a full one mil. Uh, windage travel, you're not gonna ever dial this, but it's the same on both of them, 10 mils. If the Parallax had some winner, uh, it would slightly be the AMG. It's 25 yards to infinity. The Razer HD uh, four and a half to 27 by 56 is 32. Uh, so it starts 32 to infinity versus 25 to infinity. Here's the big kicker, weight. This is 28.8 ounces, comes out to, that's 1.8 pounds, okay? Pretty respectable for the feature set. Razer HD Gen 2, on the other hand, has the reputation for being extremely heavy, and that it is. It's just a hair over three pounds, which is 48.5 ounces. Again, 48.5, 28.8. Yeah, that's, it's, it's almost half the weight, the AMG to this one. So that should kind of draw the line pretty clearly of where these are suited. Both of them are extremely capable for long range tactical applications, without a doubt. But this one certainly seems to be more kind of presented for a duty role. You know, police, law enforcement, maybe military, uh, or just a rifle that you're going to have to carry around a little bit more. With the Gen 2, the heavier weight is actually advantageous to certain situations. Bench rest, competition, the weight can help mitigate recoil, stay on target. Actually, you could be on the higher magnification settings because the whole rifle is going to sit still because it's so darn heavy. In applications like that, you can understand why this one might be the one to go with. But uh, yeah, obviously I see the application for shedding almost half that weight uh, for the feature set this one has. In that sense, they are the top of what they do on the Vortex lineup. Um, with that said, the pricing on them. I don't even remember the MSRP that much because it's kind of irrelevant. Street price is always way different. 
I know if you check the MSRP, the Razer um, HD AMG is gonna be more expensive. However, the street price, they start to equalize quite a bit, actually. These two, exactly equipped as you see them, are actually, to the penny, the exact same price. That is because this one has the H59 reticle. This is, this and the Tremor 3, they are the baddest the Razer HD Gen 2s come. With that reticle, that is the highest street price of $2,499.99. Forget that, let's call it $2,500 for the Gen 2 with one of those reticles. Again, Tremor 3 or H59. Those reticles are not available with this one, but with the EBR7B, it's also $2,500 street price. However, if you get the EBR7C reticle, I can't believe I uh, remember all that. If you get the EBR7C reticle with the Gen 2, it's gonna be maybe about a couple hundred bucks, $200 or so less street price than the AMG. So if you want just this scope uh, with the same reticle, this is actually cheaper. I use that term pretty lightly because um, cheap doesn't describe either one of these. However, I would argue this. Although these are pretty pennies, uh, as they sit, $2,500 each, um, they are even then well-priced considering what they compete with. That's kind of the Vortex motto, really. Again, with the $350 Diamondback, $1,000 Viper PSTs. When you see these, they're always running competitions, um, King of Two Mile, all kinds of stuff, and they are right up there next to the Night Force A-Tacker, Night Force Beast, Schmidt and Benders, uh, all kinds of stuff. The list goes on. That cost about anywhere from $1,000 to $2,500 more than even this one. And this one's invited to the party. It's certainly part of the conversation, and it's no slouch. So that's kind of the Vortex range. Even their top tiers are actually well-priced for what they compete with, but they offer the top tier stuff. So that's the cool thing about Vortex. It's really everything from A to Z within scopes. One thing I always thought was like super cool with the uh, Razer HD uh, Gen 2 lineup was just how big their turrets are. The turret functionality is actually the same. Uh, everything's just kind of more condensed with the AMG. But yeah, the Gen 2, I just thought these turrets just look huge. Like they make your hands feel small because you have to like wrap around them here. You pull up to unlock and then just how large they are, how much of the surface of their hand, of your hand they take up. Uh, really, really cool. As far as tactility, uh, no complaints. Uh, it takes a, the perfect amount of force, I would say, to kind of get it to go. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'll try to put the lav mic close to it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Zero stop, of course, and then it is uh, half a mil, so five clicks, and then five, and back to zero. So it lets you over travel a little bit past that. I'm okay with the hard zero personally. The only Vortex I know that does that is actually the Viper PST series. I like that hard stop on the zero personally, but I'm uh, as long as it doesn't over rotate to the other zero, I'm fine with it. Um, let's see what this one does. Same thing, lets you over travel uh, half a mil, so five clicks. Yeah, again, those are some really snappy clicks. Yeah, that feels great. Uh, parallax, nice and smooth, obviously. The illumination uh, tucks in here. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, but you go, go ahead and pull that little knurled part out. Goes really easy, and you have one to 10 with an off in between. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to tell a difference between optical quality, certainly not in my first day with, uh, with the new AMG. Um, but just for messing around, just kind of getting some snaps of just in my backyard and stuff like that. I'm trying, I'm just not gonna be able to tell a difference. Both of them just look second to none as far as quality. Um, they look fantastic, They're very, very clean. I, again, I, I know the production is different on them, but they just both look just superhuman kind of clarity. Maybe things will kind of start opening up a little bit more. I'll kind of see a difference once we put a rifle under both of these and stretch it out to well over a mile. That is the plan on the main channel, again, within a month or two, so hopefully sooner than later. So yeah, I think the specs kind of speak for themselves, but I think for the real world applications that thankfully I don't really have to fulfill, uh, but uh, yeah, if I was like a police, law enforcement, sniper, uh, marksman, I think I'd rather have that one right there. But for me, kind of plotting down my lazy butt in the bed of my truck doing some long range shooting, um, yeah, I think I'm kind of still drawn to the Razer HD Gen 2, but these are certainly two very, very cool yet different scopes, but I thought I'd kind of shed some light on them. Either way, they are amazing. Uh, I think that's a short way to put it. If weight is a concern, here you go. If it's not, here you go. So hopefully that kind of shed some light on it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, more content on these very soon, not on this channel, but on the main channel, again, within a month or two, so kind of look out for that. But that does it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great one.